Hello, let's discuss extracting a mandibular molar tooth and with implant placement following socket preservation. Now, implant placement in extracted molar sockets is completely different than implant placement when you're extracting a single rooted tooth like a bicuspid or anterior tooth. Here's the difference. I love to place implants immediately when I've extracted a single rooted tooth because I'm very careful to extract the tooth straight out of the socket vertically. I never extract them horizontally because, because you lose the buccal plate. I never place an implant at the time of extraction, however, if it's a multi-rooted tooth. The reason for that is you're placing the implant between the roots in the furcation area and the alveolar crest never comes out exactly right. You may section the molar tooth if you can't remove it in, you know, straight out with one piece, which is difficult. Usually I'll section those and remove it in two pieces so I can come straight out. Then bone grafter in this case, I'm using platelet rich fibrin only and I'm going to show you how wonderfully that preserves the socket and fills in and creates an ideal situation for implant placement six months from the time of extraction. So this is the presenting situation. You can see the body is rejecting this tooth that had had endodontic treatment. Okay, so giving a painless mandibular block. Now I'm drawing the patient's blood. So you spin it down and we do this before we extract the tooth. So I'm sectioning the tooth into two pieces. First removing the crown, this is just an elevator. Then loosen the tooth. It should be fairly easy to loosen since you've got all the bone loss. And then I'm going to section it facial lingually. This is just a medium sized coarse barrel diamond. Lots of water, light pressure. And I'm going to loosen it from mesial to distal and then place the elevator between the roots and loosen them again, separate them from each other and then extract it straight away. We've got just a tip and I'm going to very lightly use this round burr with light pressure. I'm not trying to go down into the socket and remove that entire root tip. What I'm trying to do is remove most of it, but you want to be really, really careful not to touch the inferior alveolar nerve. Would I leave a small piece of that root tip? Yes, I would, and yes, I'm going to. But you don't want to leave a third of the root, but a little bit. So I'm going to take periodic radiographs and see I've got about three millimeters of root right here, so I'm going to remove another couple of millimeters, but I'm going to leave that last little millimeter. Why? I'm not coming close to that inferior alveolar nerve. This after we spun down the patient's blood, and you can see the platelet-rich fibrin is the yellow part on top of the blood. So I'm reflecting the flap, cleaning out any granulation tissue. I'm going to irrigate the socket well with Perigard, which is a chlorhexidine, then scrub it with the chlorhexidine. So we're good here. See, there's the mesial socket. There may be just a little tiny bit of root tip left, but that's okay. So see how you cut the platelet-rich fibrin from the blood clot. And you put it on this tray and then put this on top of it and it flattens it out. Now I'm drawing up the serum that's squeezed from the platelet-rich fibrin through those holes that the platelet-rich fibrin is sitting on top of. And these are the platelet-rich fibrin being packed into the socket and I've squirted the serum into the socket and just irrigated it real well with that serum. So you want something that's pretty broad and pretty flat to pack it. Then I'm going to use a resorbable membrane on top of it. So I've got something covering the whole thing that I can compress down and you'll have an even surface. Now when you're placing the membrane, you want to be sure you reflect the flap just a little bit on the lingual and the facial so you can tuck the corners of this membrane under the flap. If it's just sitting flat on top of the socket, it, it's harder to suture. You, this is 3-0 plain gut suture. Take a deep bite when you're suturing the reflected flaps. You don't have to have absolute primary closure. You want to have, you want to be pretty close to it, but you don't have to have absolute primary closure. If I'm placing an implant 
in an, in an edentulous site, I will have complete primary closure, but if you've extracted a tooth and then you're preserving the socket, you probably won't. Okay, this is six months post-extraction PRF placement. That's all we placed in the socket was platelet-rich fibrin and then covered it with a resorbable collagen membrane. Note that there is minimum, if any, vertical bone loss, and the alveolar crest is almost perfectly flat. PRF alone in combination with a resorbable collagen membrane, and that's formed an ideal implant site. That's the dental minute.